This video is for the palpation of subscapularis. So I have our body in supine today. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of get into his axilla as we're going to be looking for the subscapular fossa. Um, so what we're going to be doing is kind of sinking into the axilla area. I often say try to find the deepest part where you see the most shadow. Um, be very careful about going into this location because it can often be very ticklish or painful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first push in until I start to feel some ribs and then I'm going to start to go down. Now this is going to make it a little bit harder for the camera to see, um, but I need to soften up that tissue. So I'm going to be immediately rotating his arm and putting his hand onto his abdomen. Secondarily, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach underneath. You won't be able to see this, but just kind of listen to my words for this part. And I'm going to get my body back to relax their arm down. I'm going to try to draw the scapula out towards me a little bit. And then with my hand inside his armpit or the axilla, I'm going to slowly sink in further. Now, a good way to sink in is to use the patient or a client's breath. So I'm going to ask him to take a nice deep breath in. And on his exhale, I'm going to sink a little bit further inside the axilla. And again, I might do this two or three cycles. So deep breath in for me and exhale. Good. If you find that your client is very ticklish, please try to use broad pressure. Don't make it painful, but again, using finger pokes is going to create a tickle reaction. I feel like I'm far enough inside the subscapular fossa for me to feel the majority of his origin. So what I'm now going to ask uh, my person to do is to push his palm down. Good. And as soon as he pushes his palm into his abdomen, my fingers get lifted up and out a little bit. Again, you might be able to see it on the camera. Let's try that again. Up and out, good, and then back in. So each time he activates subscapularis by doing medial rotation, my fingers are kind of lifted up in that subscapular fossa. I'm gonna slide my hand out. Now, do this very gently, but as I'm gonna to start to externally rotate him a little bit, you can see that I'm quite a ways into his axilla. Um, as I kind of move his arm around a little bit here. So the subscapular fossa, you're not actually gonna be able to contact it, but you are contacting subscapularis with inside it. And again, it's responsible for doing this medial rotation of the arm at the glenohumeral joint. Since this is the origin, I'm gonna be turning my hands and slowly making my way up towards the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So with his arm currently sitting in the neutral point, I can identify right here his long head tendon of his biceps brachii. And I'm gonna roll slightly medial at that most proximal end, and this would be approximately where the lesser tubercle is. That's not that far of a difference. So with my hand currently in his axilla, I'm just gonna slowly change my direction from pushing this way to trying to push up to where I believe that insertion was. So again, I'm gonna change my pressure and slowly alter and work my way up towards that lesser. Now, finally, I'm gonna bring his arm back into medial rotation, which will bring that lesser tubercle towards my fingertips. Pretty much on it right now with my index and my middle finger. And again, I'm gonna get him to push down into my forearm now. Go ahead, excellent, and relax. And one more time and I can feel the tendinous part of subscapularis pushing into my fingertips deep to pectoralis major here. So we've palpated the origin along the belly and up towards the insertion on that lesser tubercle of the humerus. Now, as I bring my weight off my hand, I'm gonna slowly sink out from being inside the subscapular fossa. As the last kind of comments on it, again, we're doing medial rotation of the arm at the glenohumeral joint, and this muscle is going to be innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerves.